Welcome to my uh, first uh, movie review. Yeah, I also watch movies. Um, I'll mostly be reviewing the animated one, so I can at least talk about one before I do my end of the year thing. So, uh, we're gonna call it the major one, like, I'm in free, I'll be talking about it, obviously, but we'll keep on the other one. Uh, go. So, then, we got first anime movie of 2013, Escape from the Planet It's bad. I could leave it at that, but sadly I have more to talk about. Yeah, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's bad. But first thing first, uh, directed by Cal Blunker? I don't know. Never done anything else. You can see why. It was done by the studio responsible for some of the recent Barbie movie, as well as Spooky Godmother. Oh, and Reboot and Beat Dorm. And then it's all it. Go. I don't know. They've improved the far as the animation is concerned, but that's about it. But the concept for this movie was pitched by one of the writers of Hiddling 2. That does a lot. Um, the first of all, the story is that we got two the plant Bob, B A A B, who. We have their fake program where Mission Control is headed by our hero Gary Cooperova, with by uh, the bad guy from Hero of the Two, that's like how I remember him, and Brother George, played by Brendan Fraser. Gary is a geeky guy who basically isn't popular and such, but he's really smart. But a brother who is super popular and heroic fails to key that, and he's just dumb. And I mean dumb, like dumb. Dumb and composed. And they fight a lot, and you know, Gutch and you know, getting fun kid doesn't really. He wants to follow Scorch instead of you know, Gary, but Gary doesn't like that. But then one day, you know, a Scorch, he wants to go on a mission to a dark planet, which we find out is Earth. He, Gary, thinks it's too dangerous, but everyone disagrees and wants the hero to go out there. Go! So after a falling out, falling out, Scorch decides to go there, and guess what? He gets captured by the evil William Shatner. Seriously, how did William Shatner get roped into this? And so now Gary has to go save him. Save him, and then it just... Ugh. First, the worst problem with the movie is the characters. They are boring, annoying, useless, horrible, unfunny, the list goes on. Our main character is an uninteresting, nerdy character who basically, while he is kind of the most sympathetic because I don't remember him, he doesn't really get any energy nor any interesting lines or just okay. He mostly just bumbles around trying to save the place and learns the lesson somehow. Yeah, his brother is the one that learns the lesson. Yeah, he doesn't learn anything or really develop, not in an interesting way. It's one of those cases. For the movie can be changed, but they keep exactly the same to me. So he's just boring. The voice actor doesn't really add anything. His brother is, like, I'm not gonna show it. He's an asshole. He basically has the brother just weighing them down, not doing anything. He's an idiot. He insults everyone, and every time he tries to be nice, he. He retaliates, and even when they're both captured, everything they want, he's still bitching at him. At him, and it's not until the heart to heart talk in the climax where he actually learns anything, but after that, he's still at the game. I hated him. Oh, it gets worse with the, with Gary's wife, voiced by Gary Jessica Parker, who basically has a couple hours where she has to save a lot of things as well. Well, and she was boring and trying to. Be bad at, but didn't really have any personality, and she only basically they wanted to have something for him to do in order to, you know, convert that cliche of the wife not doing anything, but she actually become even more cliche. The kid is basically a punk ass kid. Go, I'm kidding about you, care about sports, and he took a dick. But then he go, oh, I prove I can be awesome, and he's really, really annoying. Oh, oh, there's more. There is the aliens that Area 51 are even more. Because there, there are three of them. 
fair in the rock one voiced by Jane Lynch. Yeah, from Wreck It Ralph to Viv. Big Witch, like Al Hitty song in this one. Huh. And the game of the wedding scene, and I was exactly expecting the Skybug to come in because that would have been a lot cooler. But I digress. Um, um, then there's the vlog thing voiced by, uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, George Lopez. And there's the mouth thing voiced by Craig Robinson. And they, the only point to them to show that there are more aliens than the blue one. Because they all have that same personality. Quirky alien. And they don't get any development. Nor any good line, because they're both uninteresting and boring and have no personality. And their voice actually reflect them. It kept maybe Jane Lynch, but she didn't do anything. Cut her out of the movie and boom. Game. Oh, then there's our villain, Shatner here. Who would just... Got kind of villain because he's not interesting and boring. And he ruined Chapman's sounds like he was having fun and to his credit, he is the best point catcher in this because he sounds like he was actually trying to get a good performance out of this. And but it was just dumb and he he tried they try to make him a fret, but I just didn't really find that threatening because it's only with Shatner. You can't find him threatening. I'm sorry. But, uh, you also get some backstory and a motivation between things later on, but I just found it more odd. And to be in the movie, he to whiplash on who can be pathetic or not. Then, the other chick was by Jessica Alba, who was also kind of boring, who basically, uh, I'm not going to reveal it, but it's so cliche that you're looking at coming anyway, but I'll reveal it, I won't reveal it. Who basically, they both flip flop between pathetic and not, to the point in which when they do give the boot to one of them, you're like, Dude, so we all, especially when you sign this character, because even though he gets sympathetic at all, very good point where he, where even though he eventually grew up to be horrible, you're like, there's no reason for that, you know? But it's stupid. Imagine if you watch a Doomitra backstory and didn't feel bad for him at all. That's what we're talking about here. I mean, any attempt at making this thing going. On top of that, it's thorny and generic and cliche, with that, and while it's slightly better than Halloween 2, it's still nothing special. They do throw an interesting thing with their own motivation and what I'm going to plan it, but it felt complicated. It's not like a fully real thing, it's like, you no, know, too little too late, and it felt like you've drawn the movie out further and further because it gets short, it can now be 20 minutes, and that can foul credit. But yeah, it felt like going on forever, all these gub plots and annoying things, and it's not funny either, either if the joke was a dull, or annoying pop culture reference. There is, and then the, you know how every alien movie has the alien made our stuff joke? Yeah, they make one here. Turn, and I could turn it out, they made copy animation. Yeah, go, the alien car responsible well, for this? Kill them. Anyway, and Vern Gothel just a lot of jokes, like, like one joke, wherever Vern, when the Asian guy got saying a name, it goes director or something. Yeah, okay. Vern Gothel, uh, the computer animation joke has a reference on Lasseter. Yeah, the movie wish it could, could look with Shoelake, though, take the car. No, no, it wish it could look with Shoelake, a video in Quato. Okay, okay, it's not that bad. Okay. And the animation is decently rendered in the least, you can see what's going on. And even though all the characters look generic and hell, in the least, it's rendered well and there's some good stuff in the action scene, which give it a little bit of substance. But that a little bit. So, every once in a while, and there's only a few funny jokes, like, very good part where, where the aliens of the ship, who was also kind of annoying, voiced by Ricky Jarvis. Yeah. Dar for like kid four, remember him that stupid. And he was showing off the typical we know shit about human joke and there's one bit about the rule which I find kinda of funny. The Gonko uh joke at the Kevin Eleven King and I found kinda of funny. And it continued to be funny. The only funny running joke in this. But I can't find a King of Element that I like. And it managed to be worse than something like Marnie's mom. Because that one was case. 
painfully bad. That was just bad. You could pass off as just a generic film, but it's more just generic to me. It was annoying, it was bad, and it we weren't in a movie of the year. And I have seen nearly of I mean, who knows, Despicable Me 2 could be worse, but to be fair, uh, okay, never mind. But this is bad. I give it a D, like a D, like. Like, I give it every rating imaginable. Dog shit, full of bullshit, heel of garbage, what have you. It's bad. It has a good point. And to be fair, near the end, if the Michael Plank from starting to like it, it's starting to. He, whenever it buckles down trying to get action y, it's not as bad before, but it still get kind of bad. So, not. I. I want to like it more than I do do the fat guy animated. And some other thing. For a while, it's bad. Not that bad as Gay Hoodlum 2 or something, because while there are things that are worth Hoodlum 2, Hoodlum 2 is constantly more annoying. The characters are really dull or annoying. And the story is cliche and animation kind of generic. So, there you go. Gay from Planet Earth, the first anime movie of the year. Hopefully, the others are better. Don't worry, guys. The crew comes out in two weeks. Hopefully, Chris Gander can cook up a few things over at DreamWorks while they make or get here with Fair Horror. It's bad. Don't eat it. The end.